Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Klein. I'm the director of P20 initiatives at Northern Illinois University. And a big part of my job is working with school districts and community colleges throughout Illinois to support student learning in the career pathways. Obviously, right now, as we're all sheltering in place and learning at home, we can't go out and do job shadowing or internships. So what we've done is we're bringing these work based learning experiences to you via YouTube. We're interviewing a wide variety of guests from a range of occupations, and today is a real special one. This is not the first time that our guest has appeared on webcam uh, to a large audience, much larger audiences even than ours in the last couple of weeks while we've been sheltering in place. So we're very lucky to have Elizabeth with us. I'm going to turn this over to Elizabeth to let her introduce herself and tell you a little bit about what she does and how she got there. Elizabeth? Hey everybody, my name is Elizabeth Stanley. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I live in New York City. I'm an actress and most recently I've been playing the role of Mary Jane in the Broadway musical Jagged Little Pill, which is a completely new story. The book is by the screenwriter Diablo Cody and the songs are by the famous Alanis Morissette. Awesome, so you're an actress and a singer. Um, tell us tell us more about how you ended up uh, doing that job that so many people consider a dream job. I also consider it my dream job. Um, so <laughs> uh, I feel really lucky to be able to be doing what I love to do. Um, but it's definitely a, a career path that is it's not like a, a ladder that you climb. It's a constant roller coaster. So um, like this moment now where we're all staying at home and we're all going, what's going on? I have those moments a lot, not to this extreme because the whole globe isn't experiencing at the same time, but this is not an unusual kind of atmosphere for me as an actor to have um, downtime that I have to kind of create structure and activity for myself. Um, but to back it up, I grew up in a very small town in Southern Illinois, and then I went to college at Indiana University and I studied vocal performance and I thought at that time I was going to be an opera singer but then I got there and I kind of met other theater majors and, and I just like made other friends and they mm -hmm. kind of said you should look at doing theater uh, and then I really fell in love with that and so by the time I graduated I had altered my class course enough that I was able to take um, some acting and some dance classes in addition to the theater classes I had taken. And then I moved to New York City after I graduated and I started auditioning and just like signing up for every audition I could find and just going to a lot of auditions. And, and then, you know, over the past 20 years, I've sort of built this career that um, after I lived in New York, I think for six years, I made my Broadway debut in a revival of the Sondheim Musical Company. And, and then I've done a handful of Broadway shows in between there, but there's also a ton of regional theater work, which we can talk about a little bit, but um, that's been like the, the big version of what my life has been like in terms of getting from like high school to now. So first of all, did you have opportunities in your high school to perform, to be on stage? Um, we certainly have such a wide range of high schools in Illinois and across the United States. Um, not really. My high school is really rural. Uh, it's like a bunch of small towns, all less than a thousand people that all were bussed into this, this facility that was literally surrounded by cornfields. So our opportunities were pretty limited at my school. They did have a drama club and they had a high school band. Um, and some years they had a chorus and some years they didn't. So it was really, um, I was always really jealous of like the schools that had these amazing programs that put on a giant musical and had big show choirs and all this because my school didn't have that. Um, there was a community theater about 30 miles from where I grew up and that's where I did a lot of the, um, you know, I did a lot of their plays and things like that. And, and likewise, um, I met people through that circle that like I took voice lessons from and, and then eventually I like took dance for a couple of years and I studied piano. And so I took a lot of lessons, um, which was really fortunate for me that my parents were willing and able to like, drive mm -hmm. me. So getting into IU, 
um, that's a pretty Indiana University. That's a that's a pretty well regarded uh, school of music and fine arts. And so, what was that like coming from the high school setting that you did? Like, was that easy to do? Was that hard to do? What was required of you to to show that you were going to be able to perform at the level that they were going to expect you to perform there? Um. Yeah, I had to prepare. I can't remember. It's it's been a little while now, so but I can't remember exactly. But um, for it was it's a classical music program there, mm -hmm. so they mm -hmm. asked that you prepare. I think three songs, and then they would select two of them. Um, and I had to submit at that time. It was a cassette, and then you would be sort of like pre-screened, and then I went to the actual school and auditioned. And so I think I auditioned at four places. I know now it's actually my fiance that is like his, he coaches students through the college mm -hmm. audition process. So I'm a, I, I get sound bites of what he does, but mm -hmm. I know now if you're someone who's interested in doing that, um, it's pretty much the same process of like a pre-screen and then um, an in-person audition. And every school has something slightly different that they want. So it can be a little intense throughout the audition process. Um, but you just want to be as prepared as possible. And there are people, no matter where you live, there are people that you can connect with just like this over the internet to help you prepare should you need some assistance. So Elizabeth, I think that's great. I really appreciate you telling that story because again, certainly in Illinois, we have high schools that have literally professional theaters that uh, in, within the building and do multiple productions a year and students are really lucky to have all kinds of great opportunities and we also have high schools that don't have those experiences and so you go to show us that it, despite uh, regardless of your high school background you can you can avail yourself of those opportunities as you get to post-secondary institutions so that's awesome thank you for yeah. sharing that yeah. so one of the interesting things and and this might be an opportunity to talk about what it's like if you're working in a regional theater versus on Broadway, because there may be similarities, there may be differences, but walk us through a, a kind of a day or a week, whatever makes the most sense in the light in your life as an as an actor. Well, let me clarify. So because I, I think like for most actors you spend there are many days when you spend looking for a job mm -hmm. and then there are many days when you spend actually like doing the job. So do you want me to talk about when, when you're doing a job? <laughs> let's, let's actually, if you'll briefly talk about that when you're looking a job and then uh, looking for a job and then let's talk about what it was like for you before the shelter in place where you were actually doing a job because they're both super interesting and you've already alluded to being in kind of this space is not as unusual for you as it might be for people in other lines of work. And I think that's really important for people in many of the different fine arts um, and even other fields where you're kind of working as an independent contractor to understand what that's like. So I think there's going to be a lot of connections to other careers. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, when I am in between jobs, I, I'm usually looking for the next job. And sometimes even when I have a job, and I but I know it's ending soon, then I'm already looking for the next job. Mm -hmm. So that's a big part of being any sort of freelance person mm -hmm. um, is being okay with that instability, um, which can feel a little scary, but I think is not so bad once you kind of get used to it. Um, so for me, what it looks like is being in touch with my agent, who is someone that I pay who looks for jobs for me. So when you first, when I first moved to New York, I didn't have an agent. So there's a website called backstage.com that will list all the auditions that are happening. So you could go on there today and kind of mm -hmm. see like what's available um, to kind of get a feel for what's out there. Um, but an agent uh, helps the process by, by just, they can connect you with, maybe you can, they can help you skip a couple rounds of, of auditions. So like by having an agent, the casting director knows like, oh, this person has proved themselves to an agent. So I don't need to do the pre-screen with them. So it kind of, it saves you a few steps once you can kind of get that in place. Um, but so my agent will email me and say, we have this appointment for you and it'll give me the information for the audition. So it'll say like, going to be on this day, at this time, at this place, bring this. And then it'll often have a PDF of some scenes from the play or from the TV show or the musical that I need to memorize. And then if it's a musical, it'll often have 
um, same thing, a PDF of the, the score. And then oftentimes an MP3 of like a backup track mm -hmm. or a learning track if it's a new mm -hmm. song. So then that's my responsibility to learn those things. Um, and if I don't, like I happen to play the piano and because I studied music, like learning music on my own is not so hard for me, but a lot of my friends, that's much trickier for them. It's not something mm -hmm. they studied as much. So then you might want to schedule a voice lesson or schedule a coaching with someone who can help you. Mm -hmm. So you make sure that you learn everything correctly. The same thing, like if I get a scene that I feel not as confident about, like if I have to do a dialect or something that's not something that I've had as much experience doing, mm -hmm. I'll oftentimes make an appointment to, to have someone help me coach with that. Um, and it kind of is cyclical, like a lot, like a sp there's a lot of theater work that happens in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So that generally means like the spring is a really busy time. So that's kind of great, but it also means you have to be able to juggle like preparing multiple things at once. Mm -hmm. um, when I was first starting out too, I, a lot of the jobs I did didn't pay quite as much. Um, or didn't last quite as long. And also I wasn't getting maybe as many jobs. And so that meant that I also needed to have another side hustle. So I've done a number of things like throughout my twenties. Um, I waited tables, I was a cater waiter, I was a nanny, I was a temp in an office. So I think like that was some advice that was given to me. Just someone said the first day you move to New York City, like get another job so that you're not, it takes some of the pressure off so that when I go in an audition, mm -hmm. I can just be thinking like, I want to do my best because I love this work and I want to do this work and not like, I need this job because otherwise I'm going to get kicked out of my apartment and not be able to eat and like all of the other kind of stressful things that have to do with money. Um, so that's kind of the process of looking for a job. Mm -hmm. um, and over time you build relationships with, because you'll go in and you'll audition for the same casting directors and the same. So you, there's a certain level of professionalism too. You want to represent yourself well each time mm -hmm. you go in so that they want to see you again. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the day. So sometimes, it, you know, if you have an audition, you you wake up, you prepare, you go to the audition, and then maybe you go to your other job or, or it'll be flip-flopped. So mm -hmm. it's helpful too if you can find a job that has a little bit of flexibility in terms of the timing of all of that. Mm -hmm. So you can get uh, to the auditions. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, does that answer the question for looking for the, a job? Totally. And then what happens like when you have a job, you're performing on Broadway and, and what does your day look like or your week look like then? So when you get a job, you're like, yes. Um, so I, pry, I, I try and ahead of time before rehearsals begin, um, to learn all my material. I try and like learn my music and have my lines memorized so that uh, oftentimes, you know, you, you always want more time in rehearsal. So I try and show up in advance, like as prepared as possible. Mm -hmm. Generally theater, a theater job, whether it's a regional theater job or Broadway, they're not dissimilar in their structure. Um, rehearses six days a week. So usually it's Monday through, I mean, sorry, it's, Tuesday through Sunday, so you have Monday off. Rehearsal days are usually 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. with an hour lunch break. And then closer to once you like move out of the rehearsal studio and into the theater, the days might be longer for a couple weeks. And then when the show opens, you do have more free time during the day. So you still usually just have Monday as your day off, mm -hmm. uh, which means that you kind of have to figure out how to make sure that you have enough time to like rest and recharge because it's not like the typical weekend that we're used to from growing up or if you have a different job. Um, but during the day, you can kind of use that time however you need. Like when I'm in a Broadway show, I tend to be a little busier. So I might be doing an interview or a press thing or a TV appearance during the day. Um, but then I also just do normal human things that most people do at night. So I'm going to like do my laundry and catch up on my emails and go to the grocery store and things like that. Um, so I usually sleep in, I get up like around nine and then I do this sort of life routine things. And then in like by mid afternoon, by like three o'clock, I'll be making my way or doing a workout outside or going to a yoga studio and something mm -hmm. to get my body physically warmed up. And I'll get to the theater two hours before the show starts so that I can like 
have a bite to eat and then also start like warming up my voice, mm -hmm. getting into costume and wig. And um, as a general rule, you're required to be at the theater a half hour before the actual performance begins. Um, so some people can cut it closer, but I, I need a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like currently my show is three hours. So, you know, I get there at six and then I'm done around 11 and I'll sign mm -hmm. some labels at the stage door usually and I'm mm -hmm. home by midnight. So it's just sort of like a, a later day than most people are probably used to. With, with the evening being in the morning instead, kind of, right? Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's, that's super interesting. So um, what, thinking about your work, and beyond being a good actor or a good singer or a good dancer, what are some of the skills that are really important to be successful in in the world of fine arts or specifically in the world of musical theater? I think you have to be really self-motivated uh, because There, there is, there's not like the built-in structure, like when you're not doing a show, which is a lot of the time. Um, so you have to make a schedule for yourself. You have to say like, I'm gonna get up at this time every day. I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm, I'm gonna practice this, you know, skill set, or I'm gonna sign up for this class or, um, so you have to kind of make everything happen for yourself. Um, which is true for a lot of jobs, but um, it's definitely one that I've seen be really helpful for people in this industry. Um, also like a lot of resilience and sort of like a thick skin because you do face a lot of rejection. Um, I know I've had friends in recent years go through a job change and, and go to an interview, which is maybe the first interview they've been to in 20 years. And they're like, oh, my God, I was so nervous. I don't know how you do this all the time. So mm -hmm. I, I will say that if you do it a lot, it gets easier than like, you know, I think when you're in high school and you maybe have one show to audition for, like mm -hmm. your, maybe your school is doing one show. It feels mm -hmm. like the stakes are so high. Mm -hmm. It feels easier in some ways in the professional world because there are lots of things to audition for. So you get more used to not caring quite as much about every mm -hmm. single audition. Um, with that being said, there's still going to be ones that you really want and that mm -hmm. you won't get. Um, so it's good to be resilient and to um, just have like pretty solid self-esteem or have like a really good set of friends and family who can remind you that like you got to keep going. Um, it also is really helpful to be thrifty and like organized with your finances um, because it's hard to plan in advance you know, in the way mm -hmm. that if you have a salary job and you know that you have this job probably until you decide to retire you can make big plans you can say I'm going to take a you know a two-week vacation in July and I'm mm -hmm. going to but where in this industry you just kind of never know so I think you have to be pretty good at estimating and saving and um being a little more conservative probably than than you might be in another job that that's really great advice that's really unique that you brought up the personal finance piece i really appreciate that i want to go back to the resilience too because i did talk to some high school students about about this particular career pathways virtual trailheads interview and one question i was asked to ask you um, was how do you deal with that rejection? And um, obviously, all of us are experiencing things right now where resilience is really important. And, and I think most people experience that in different times in their life. But yes, it's very clearly part of the career pathway in any of the fine arts. And certainly when you're auditioning for other people and you have to be doing that all the time and counting on them to see you in that role, to give you that job. Um, so you talked about having good self-esteem. You talked about having good family and uh, good relationships with families and family and friends that will help you through those. Do you have any other tips for uh, people, particularly for adolescents or young adults, on being resilient? 
Um, I mean, it's, I feel like it's so cliche, especially in this moment of social media and everything, but try not to look to the side, you know, just like keep your eyes on your own paper and don't be comparing yourself to what your colleagues are doing because it's never ending. I think like, you know, Meryl Streep has probably had moments where she's like, oh, I'm really bummed that, you know, I don't know, Diane Keaton got that role. I wish mm -hmm. I could have done it, you know? So or it's, so it like, it never ends in this profession. It's, it's just like, so if you get in the habit of doing that, it, it like cuts you down before you even begin. Um, so just try and keep kind of on your own path and on your own journey. Um, and know that it's going to be really different for everyone. Um, and I think it's it's not always in your control, but the more you can like get back out there right away, I think it helps. You know, if you have an audition that, you know, you tank, it goes badly, you make a mistake, whatever, or you're amazing and they don't choose you. Mm -hmm. um, the more quickly you can go to another audition, even if it's not one you care about, like just sign up and go to something else to like shake it off and, and have a practice of like giving a really good audition again. That's awesome. That's great advice. And it's probably applicable well beyond auditions like this. So I really, really appreciate you sharing that. And I know that we have high school students who will too. So again, your job appears very glamorous, but in all of our jobs, we, we recorded with an attorney just yesterday. And in his episode, he keeps saying over and over, it's not like TV. My job is not like what you see on TV. Um, all of our jobs have things that either people that do our jobs tend to not like, or that we personally don't like, or that just other people don't know about. Um, so what are the things in your job that either you don't like or that you think other people don't know about that you want to expose to kind of get the full understanding of, well, whoa, 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 this is still a job. Here are these things I do. Um, what do you want to share about that with us? Um, yeah, I mean, gosh, there's so many things that I don't like. Um, no, it's, yeah, I mean, I think. I think a lot of people think that being an actor means you're rich uh, mm -hmm. because we see like the Hollywood standard. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think for some people that's the case, mm -hmm. but for most people it's not. And so particularly a theater actor generally makes much less than like someone who does something on camera. That's because like anything that you produce that's gonna be on TV or on film, can be shown over and over and over again. So they can make so much more money on it than they can a Broadway show, which only a certain number of people can come and see once, you mm -hmm. know, every single night. Um, so I think if you're after fame, I would pursue things on camera and not things on stage. <laughs> because I think being on stage night after night, um, having only one day off a week takes mm -hmm. its toll. Um, if you're interested in having a family, like that means when you're doing a show, like you're not going to be there to tuck your kids in at night. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to go on summer vacation. You're going to have to miss people's weddings. You are going to have to work on holidays. Um, it, so some of those things are a, not so glamorous. Um, and that happens in, you know, all kinds of professions. But I think it's not something that I thought about before I got into this. And then I was in it and I was like, oh, that's not my favorite part of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's also kind of hard on your body, like doing a, like being a professional athlete in some mm -hmm. ways, like um, especially if you're a dancer, then, you know, you're doing really difficult, repetitive movement every single night. Um, and so I know, I know many people who are 40 who've had a hip replacement or a knee replacement mm. or, you know, so it's like, and they're like people that you look at and you think, oh, you're gorgeous. You look like a supermodel, mm. but it's because it, it's just like, it takes a toll doing mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. day after day. So those are, those are great things to expose about it along kind of those same lines. Um, 
There's a lot of different jobs that go into any production, and you don't have to be in front of the curtain to necessarily have a career in in theater or in movies or television, for example, on the other side of the camera. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, while well, your job is on stage, can you tell us a little bit about what some of those other jobs are, just to make sure we all have our kind of our minds as wide open as possible to what some of the career options are for us in something we might be passionate about? Yeah, so it's uh, that's a great question because I feel like every person that works in my industry usually comes to it because at some point in their lives, like maybe when they were in middle school or high school, mm -hmm. like they were in their high school musical and they loved it. Um, but not everyone decides that they want to be like on stage. So every production has stage managers who are the people who are in charge of like calling all of the shots you know they're like really in charge of the entire show obviously every show has a director choreographer and all these things have assistants as well um a dramaturg which if you don't know what that is they're the person who is really in charge of if it's a an old play like a shakespearean play they're in charge of like telling you what the history is and what was happening so what this what this text means within the context of that time. And if it's contemporary, then they're making sure that the storytelling is factual to the world that we're actually in. Um, and then every show also has like people that both design the props and then put the props in place every night and restore mm -hmm. them and, and maintain them. And the same thing with um, the set pieces and the spot operators and the, um, the wardrobe staff so people that help you do a quick change and make sure your laundry gets done and repair the costumes every show has a costume designer every designer sends the designs to a scene shop i mean a not a scene shop although that also exists for building the set um mm -hmm. so that's something mm -hmm. too but but people who build the costumes so stitchers um mm -hmm. And then there's also people that work in the box office and work in ticketing people who are ushers people who work the like merchandise table or the bar in every theater. Um, yeah, so there are a ton of jobs that like are working directly with a show um, often. And then especially like regional theaters also have like an educational outreach program often. Mm -hmm. um, people, there's a press agent for every show. There's a, um, a commercial agent for every show. Um, and then there are also like every actor has like a, uh, an agent and oftentimes mm -hmm. a manager, um, oftentimes a personal publicist. Mm -hmm. but there are a ton of things that are in the industry that are, you know, I know plenty of photographers that mostly what mm -hmm. they specialize is in theatrical photography mm -hmm. or headshots. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure I'm leaving some out, but there are a ton of jobs that are related to this world. That's awesome. So even even if some of the elements of the job and being on stage or you try and be on stage, but you you want a backup plan that keeps you involved in the industry or that you're very passionate about as well, you can bring those passions together and still still be involved in all of these different ways. And so um, that's really, really important insight into how diverse these industries are. And, and that would be true with really any entertainment field um, from athletics to theater to, um, we even see it now with esports, which is like a multi, multi billion dollar industry, which is not just the video games you play at home, uh, but but this whole other entertainment industry. And, and again, there's attorneys and accountants and so forth. So I really, that's great that you brought that up. So I, I feel lucky to be someone who's, who enjoys going to live theater performances, is able to do that. Living in Chicagoland, we obviously have a very vibrant theater scene from, from Broadway musicals that sometimes start here and then, and then go to Broadway. And oftentimes traveling companies will, Chicago will be their, their first location that, from which they'll launch after an extended period uh, to really some amazing local theater to being one of the world hubs of comedy, for example. Yeah. Um, 
and I, there's a feeling you get when you sit in the audience, and it, it could be when something's so funny or so dramatic where you feel that connection with the other audience members as well as with the people performing on stage. You might get goosebumps or the chills, that kind of thing. Um, how, do, how do you think your job has a really positive impact on the world? I think it's so interesting to be asked that question in this moment because I do, I think there is something special that I look forward to when we can return to it about people experiencing something at the same time mm -hmm. collectively. Um, and I think I, I've heard other people illustrate it like, you know, if you go to a if you go to a movie and there's nobody else in the movie theater, you're kind of like, sweet, I can spread out. This is awesome. But if you go to see a theatrical show and there's nobody else in the audience, it feels kind of sad. Uh, like you want it to be packed with people to all be experiencing it together. And I think that's, that's really, it's special. It's unique. There's something cathartic about um, feeling things at the same time we're experiencing them. It's like watching a sporting event too, as the person right next to you. So like when you're, when you're watching or when you're listening to music, our heartbeats sync up with each other. Um, and that's kind of special. Um, and, and I think like theater particularly is, is a way for us to examine our world, a way for us to see what's happening in our lives that's maybe one step removed. So the story we're watching might be modern. It might look a lot like the world we're in, but it's not actually like watching the news, you know? So I think like we could watch a two hour story about something that might be kind of difficult and painful in a way that we don't want to watch two hours of news about that subject. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's like a, this wonderful, important tool for us to be able to examine our lives and then also on a less serious note can be a great escape for us to just like laugh and mm -hmm. cry and rejoice about things and, and forget maybe all the things that are really complicated in our lives so my last question thinking about a 12 year old a 15 year old an 18 year old or a 21 year old who might be watching this and who's kind of exploring wh where they're going to go with their career, whatever that is, what advice would you give them? Oh, man. Well, I think it's, I think, I think you should dream big. Like, if there's something that you are even remotely curious about, I think you should learn more about that and, and try it out and go for it and just see what happens. I know plenty of people who I, I work with on Broadway who never even attempted to do this until they were, you know, 18. They, they got to it very late in life. Um, or people who went to college and always loved singing, but they studied math and then they couldn't quite silence the part of their heart that was like, I just want to try it. I just want to go for it. And so I think it's worth going for if there's a part of your soul that is curious about it. Um, because like I said, there are all these other like jobs within this world that I think if, if you go for it and you're like, mm, that's not really for me, you will gain experiences from your time exploring this that will lead you to other things. Um, and even if you're like the theater, not at all is for me. I like, I, I think I was saying to you earlier, like I have friends who I went to college with and we all study the same thing, but mm -hmm. you know, now they're a music administrator, a, a grant writer, a music therapist, um, a, a teacher, you know, they do all different kinds of things, but they're still kind of related to what they mm -hmm. initially were curious about. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really special and really lucky to be able to spend your days doing something that you love, that you think is important, that brings you joy, that makes you happy. Um, and so that would be my advice is that you should go for it. Well, that is uh, echoing the advice that others have given also through these episodes. And so it's so cool again to see that regardless of 
people's backgrounds and occupations that they are, are telling young people to do that. And we certainly have um, big problems that always need solving in the world and big challenges. And so having having young people think, I'm gonna go for it is is probably a pretty good good place for us to be headed. So this was awesome. This was really, really special to have you and to, to get to hear about your experiences firsthand, um, both from, from where you grew up through what you're doing today. Uh, so thank you so much for being here with us. Sure, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Uh, for those of you watching, we continue to be putting out about three episodes a week. Uh, that continues to be our plan through this shelter in place. Uh, we we are always looking for questions, ideas of occupations you'd like to see, or actually specific people. If you're like, hey, interview that person. This is someone I know, and it would be helpful. Just let us know via Twitter. We're on Twitter at, at P20 Network. That's at P20 Network, all one word. <clears throat> and we'll take your questions or ideas there whenever you have them. Thanks so much for watching. And Elizabeth, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we can't wait to get you back on stage. And uh, thanks again. Thank you.